we would like to now discuss the setup or configuration of the SuperTroll 2. You may want to follow along by referencing the flowchart that's in the back of the user manual. The page number is approximately 116. The menus are organized such that when you first press the menu button, you'll be getting approximately at the location where it says start here. The menu blocks running vertically show the major menu groups. The up and down arrow can be used to navigate from one major menu group to another. Within a menu group, pressing the enter button it takes you from left to right. To escape from a menu location, press the menu button several times. The first press will pull you back to the beginning of that submenu group. The next depression will bring you to the top of the menus. Finally, one further depression will take you out of the setup mode. It may be necessary to pause calculations while making setup changes. During this period of time, the analog outputs will go to zero, the pulse outputs will stop responding, the relays will go to an idle state until you complete your configuration and return to the run mode. Keep this in mind when making setup changes. There are also two different modes of operation for configuring the instrument. The easy setup asks as few questions as possible, whereas the more complete navigation can be used to finely tune and configure each of the outputs. Let's look at the operation of the instrument. To begin the configuration, press the menu key. You will notice that this is your starting message where it's talking about the major system parameters. We're going to be looking at the easy setup parameters and that's within this group. Pressing enter brings you to that first message. The easy setup requires you to pause calculations. Indicate that you wish to use this by pressing either the up or down arrow. You will now get a prompt for an access code. This access code must match one of those that's been previously defined for the instrument. You'll see the message editing enabled and you will notice that there's now a flashing parameter showing your selection. To change a selection from no to yes, use the up arrow followed by the enter key. The unit will now ask you a general question about the types of units of measure you wish to use. Your choices are either English or metric. It will assume the appropriate English units of measure based on customary applications. You can later change these if you find them objectionable or not what was intended for your application. Let's perform this setup using English units of measure. The flow equation is the primary calculation performed by this instrument. There are a number of selections, including selections for steam, gases, liquids, and various heat calculations. We're going to be using the steam mass calculation. The next selection is one for the fluid type. For steam, superheated steam and saturated steam are available selections. We're going to be choosing saturated steam. To change the selection, press the up or down arrow. Then press enter. You will see the input stored message. There may be additional parameters depending on 
the special selections that you may have ordered in your instrument. In this case, this instrument is asking for the condensate density on a return line. We're going to enter our condensate density here. Notice that you must use the units of measure that um, for entry that the instrument is assuming. The next parameter being requested is some information about the type of flow meter being used. We're going to assume that this unit is being used with a vortex meter which corresponds to a linear selection. Again, to change your selections, use the up and down arrow followed by pressing Enter. The next selection is for the input signal from the flow meter. We're going to be assuming a pulse input coming from our vortex meter. Use the up or down arrow until you see a suitable signal corresponding to what is required in the application. In this case, a pulse corresponds to a digital input with a trigger level of 2.5 volts. Press Enter to make that selection. You will now see a prompt asking you for the K factor of the flow meter. This number is normally provided by the meter manufacturer. And you'll notice that the instrument is asking you to enter this information in pulses per cubic feet. You may find that your flow meter is actually provided with a calibration in some other unit of measure, such as pulses per liter or pulses per gallon. You would need to convert this to pulses per cubic foot prior to entry. Let's assume in this situation that our flow meter has a K factor of 200 pulses per cubic foot. To enter a numerical value, press clear, followed by the number desired, then press enter. Again, you'll see the input stored. In this special model, you'll notice that there's also a secondary K factor where it's asking you for another factor called the condensate factor. And it again is in pulses per cubic foot. I'm going to enter a factor of 10 for this secondary input. Then press Enter. The parameter is now stored. The next signal is asking me for information about the compensation input. In our application, we're going to be assuming a 4 to 20 milliamp transmitter is being used with a range of 0 to 200 psi. Use the up and down arrow to obtain a selection corresponding to 4 to 20 milliamps gauge as indicated by the G, then press Enter. It is now asking us for the 4 milliamp equivalent in PSIG, which will be zero. It's now asking us for the full scale value. To change this, press clear. The full scale pressure of 200 PSI then press Enter. Lastly, you can assign a default value that the unit will use in its calculation should there be a failure of the pressure transmitter. In our case, I'm going to assume 100 PSI as the default pressure. The basic setup is now complete and the unit is returning and is beginning its calculations. You will notice you may see one or more error messages if the sensors are not actually connected to the instrument at this time. The loop 2 broken message is indicating to us that the pressure transmitter 
is not yet connected. To acknowledge errors, press the Enter button. You will notice that the error will reassert itself if that condition is still present. This completes the basic setup of one of the Super Troll 2 member families using the easy setup.